If I could save the Union without freeing any slave, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing all the slaves, I would do it. And if I could save it by freeing some and leaving others alone, I would also do that. Abraham Lincoln Three million Americans fought in the Civil War. 750,000 died. The three-day Battle of Gettysburg was so bloody, bodies were still being discovered as late as 1996. At the Battle of Shiloh, more Americans died than in all previous American wars combined. At Antietam, the bloodiest day of the Civil War, 23,000 dead, wounded, and missing Americans in 12 hours. At the Battle of Cold Harbor, 7,000 Americans fell in just 20 minutes. In all, the Civil War claimed more lives than all other American wars put together. How had the United States become so disunited? Following the Confederate attack on Fort Sumter, war was inescapable. Intent on keeping the Union together, Lincoln called for 75,000 volunteers to sign up for 90 days of military service. This war won't last. The Southern Rebellion, it's doomed from the start. To lead the United States Army and stop this Southern Rebellion, Lincoln asks one of the finest officers the United States has to offer, Robert E. Lee. Lee considers Lincoln's offer, but when Lee's home state of Virginia secedes, he wouldn't bear the thought of fighting against his native country. He was a loyal son of Virginia. Lee, instead, decided to lead the Confederate forces as well as personally commanding the Army of Northern Virginia. When this news hit the Confederate White House in the Confederate capital of Richmond, Virginia, President Jefferson Davis could not have been more pleased. Back in the Union capital of Washington, D.C., Lincoln needed to find a leader for the United States forces. Perhaps General Winfield Scott would do. After all, he was a veteran of the War of 1812 and the Mexican-American War. But by 1861, old fuss and feathers, as they called him, was 74 years old in poor health, and too fat to even mount a horse. Lincoln would settle on General George McClellan. McClellan was a good organizer and popular with the troops, but would prove to be a poor battlefield commander. Lincoln just hoped that with all of the advantages the Union had, McClellan could just hang on for 90 days. That's all it would take for the Confederate States to give it all up. Meet Wilmer McLean. He was born in Alexandria, Virginia, but came to own a large plot of land in Prince William County near Manassas. From his window one hot summer day in 1861, McLean saw a large Union force moving over his land like a sea of blue. From an opposite window, McLean spied a gray wave of soldiers marching quickly into position. It was the Confederate Army. Then, a Union shell exploded in his summer kitchen. After this first battle called Bull Run, or Manassas as the Confederates called it, McLean packed up his family and moved far from war 
and out of harm's way, he hoped. He chose a house in a dusty Virginia town called Appomattox Courthouse, where, four years later, Lee surrendered to Grant in his living room. McLean could brag, the war began in my front yard and ended in my front parlor. The morning of July 21st, 1861, held great excitement. Wealthy Washingtonians came out in their fancy carriages, sporting their finest clothing. Some remembered their opera glasses, all to have a summer picnic and feast their eyes on the excitement of battle. This would be a most exquisite sight to see. Ah, the joys of battle, and what a splendid day for a picnic. The Battle of Bull Run began just as most Northerners expected. The Union dominated the battlefield. The Confederate forces were outnumbered and outgunned. Some Union soldiers even paused to collect battlefield souvenirs. As the Union chased the Confederates from the Bull Run battlefield, some of the picnic goers must have wondered if this war would be over even sooner than the predicted 90 days. But when the retreating Confederate soldiers caught sight of Thomas Jackson standing in the midst of battle unfazed by the chaos, one soldier said, Look there! Look at Thomas Jackson standing there like a stone wall! The legend of General Stonewall Jackson was born. Thomas Jackson was also known as Old Blue Light. His blue eyes lit up with excitement in battle. He simply loved to fight. To say Stonewall Jackson was a different sort would be an understatement. Jackson rode into battle with one arm raised to, as he said, keep the blood balanced. He ate whole lemons in battle to help with digestion. Yes, Stonewall was different. But his unwillingness to retreat at the Battle of Bull Run inspired the outnumbered Confederates to stop running and turn once again to fight. Soon the Union Army was being pushed back. When Confederate reinforcements arrived by train, something new and more, the Union Army was on the run. Northern retreating soldiers found themselves caught between fleeing picnic goers and the arriving ambulances. A day that had begun looking like a quick Union victory turned out to be a disastrous Union defeat. This is going to take more than 90 days. Lincoln immediately increased the number of volunteers from 75,000 to 500,000 and extended the time of service in the army from 90 days to three years. After the first two years of the Civil War, one thing was clear, the Union was losing. Even Union victories, such as the Battle of Antietam, were tremendously costly. At Antietam, a total of 23,000 soldiers died in 12 hours. It was the bloodiest day of the war. It became clearer and clearer that sending soldiers into battle for the purpose of preserving the Union or keeping the country together just wasn't a good enough reason to ask men to fight and possibly die. Southern Confederates believed they were fighting to protect their fields, farms, their homes. They were fighting for their way of life. To keep slavery, even though most Confederate soldiers on the battlefields didn't even own any enslaved African Americans. Lincoln knew he needed a better reason to ask Northern men to fight. But first, Lincoln needed new leadership. After General McClellan, Lincoln's top general, allowed the Confederates to simply walk away from the Battle of Antietam, 
Lincoln knew he had to act. He would eventually fire General McClellan and replace him with Ulysses S. Grant. Now to change the reason to ask Union soldiers to fight, Lincoln pondered and thought of a new strategy and did something that he said he'd never do. He issued the Emancipation Proclamation, literally meaning the Freedom Announcement. The Emancipation Proclamation declared that all enslaved people in the rebelling Confederate states were free. If you ask many people today, they'll tell you that the Emancipation Proclamation freed the slaves. But think about it. Did the rebelling Confederate states think of Lincoln as their president? As the leader of their country, the Confederate States of America? No. So would they free their enslaved people because Lincoln said so? No. And how about those enslaved people in the border states? You know, the states that had slavery, but they didn't rebel and join the Confederate States. Did Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation free them? No. They weren't rebelling. So, who did the Emancipation Proclamation actually free? Exactly. No one. But what the Emancipation Proclamation did do was change the Union focus for fighting the war. It changed it from just simply fighting to keep the country together to a fight for freedom, something the United States had been started on in 1776. If the Union can win, all enslaved people would then be free. Slavery in the United States would be a thing of the past. Union soldiers seemed to take to the idea of fighting for freedom instead of just preserving the Union. Upon hearing the news of the Emancipation Proclamation, the dirt paths and roads that headed north became choked with runaway enslaved African Americans. Thousands didn't want to wait for the end of the war to become free. The abolitionist Frederick Douglass had been in Lincoln's ear from the onset of the war, asking Lincoln to consider using African Americans in the Union Army. Finally, Lincoln agreed. Overcoming his fears that African Americans would seek revenge against the United States as soon as they got a gun in their hands, Lincoln began the recruitment of African American soldiers, and nearly 200,000 African Americans join the Union forces, though they would not be paid the same as white soldiers. Were the winds of war beginning to shift in the North's favor? <laughs>